sensation on space around two for a PWD. Go ahead on two. I'm see the hot water was out again, so um, I reset the circuit breaker and the hot water is back. Okay, sounds great. Well, This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. I'm ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Houston ACR, this is Station. I have you loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. Welcome students and staff of Advanced Learning Academy and all those who have joined us for this special occasion of the NASA Downlink. I'm Derek Bays, the General Manager of the San Antonio River Authority. Today marks an extraordinary collaboration between the River Authority, San Antonio ISD, and this esteemed academy as we embark upon a journey of discovery with NASA astronauts from Expedition 71 aboard the International Space Station. This unique opportunity provided by NASA allows us to bridge the gap between the wonders of space exploration and the pursuit of knowledge right here on Earth. Through this downlink, students from the Advanced Learning Academy in San Antonio, Texas, will have the chance to ask their questions directly to astronauts, gaining invaluable insights into the mysteries of the cosmos. At the San Antonio River Authority, our mission extends far beyond the banks of our local waterways. We are dedicated to fostering a deeper understanding of science, engineering, and STEM education within our community. This partnership with NASA underscores our shared commitment to igniting curiosity and nurturing the next generation of innovators. Together, let us embrace this incredible opportunity to learn, explore, and be inspired by the limitless possibilities that lie ahead. Thank you for joining us on this extraordinary journey. Hi, my name is Carolina. My question is, how do you know when to take off your helmets? Thanks, Carolina. That's a great question and a very important one because space is an extremely harsh environment that, of course, humans can't survive in. Uh, but we always make sure we know when to take off our helmets uh, through the use of our procedures. So the checklists that we use, we make sure we're on the right step. Uh, we have instruments that tell us that the environment is safe for us to breathe in if we take our helmets off. And then, of course, we are also always talking to the big team on the ground who supports um, everything we do up here. So we're checking with them to make sure it's safe. Hi, my name is Alan, and my question is, what was the preparation for space travel like? Hi, Alan. Well, for a space mission, we trained for about two years on the ground, and actually many more years before that as well. Um, but for our specific mission, it's a mix of technical training, so studying the systems of our spacecraft, and the systems of the International Space Station so that we know how to work with and operate them. Uh, we also do a lot of um, physical training, of course, so that our bodies are prepared for the rigors of space flight. And then lastly, we do a lot of what we call expeditionary skills training, and that's things like uh, teamwork, learning how to lurk, work with our crewmates who will be on board space with and how to be good communicators. Hi, my name is Michael. My question is, what's your best advice for a third grader who wants to become an astronaut? Well, Michael, I was about your age when I first started dreaming about being an astronaut, so that's a great question. 
And I would say, um, first, study hard in all your subjects. Math and science, of course, are really important, but it's uh, really important to be a well-rounded human. So you want to study English, art, all the different subjects. Um, and then second, take care of your body. So keep in good health. And third, be a good teammate and a friend. Uh, learn how to work with different people. Hi, my name is Mario. And my question is, what was your journey like to make it to this point in your career? Well, leaving high school, uh, I thought I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and I had a plan all laid out. Um, but looking back on it now, um, over the course of my career, as I went through school and I gained work experience, uh, those plans changed. Um, I got new interests, uh, new opportunities came along that I was able to take. And so I would say, just looking back on my journey in general, uh, that it involved a lot of change. Um, a lot of unexpected opportunities and, of course, a lot of um, success and also failure and all of the learning and growth that comes from those thing, experiences. Hi, my name is Matthew and my question is, does poop float in your mouth when you try to eat? Great question, Matthew. And I actually have some snacks to show you because up here on Space Station, everything is always floating. So eating is especially fun. And the food does float around in our mouth. Fortunately, our bodies work the same as they do on Earth. So once we chew and swallow the food, muscles move it down to our stomach and nothing, it, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't float around down there. Hi, my name is Alexandria, and my question is, how do you entertain yourself? Thanks, Alexandria. I spend a lot of time looking out the windows here. We have great windows that look down on Earth and out into the stars, and so looking at Earth and the stars is one of my favorite things to do up here. Um, I also like taking photographs. Photography is something I got into, and hanging out with my crewmates, of course. Hi, my name is Aini, and my question is, how do the astronauts know when to go to bed? Well, we see so many sunrises and sunsets every day that uh, it could be really hard to know how to go to bed, and sometimes our bodies are a little bit confused by that, but we uh, work on Greenwich Mean Time, so we keep a pretty normal work day um, starting around 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., and then we go to bed at a regular hour. So in short, we use a clock. Hi, my name is Jack, and my question is how do you get pictures from satellites? Well, we take a lot of pictures up here as astronauts, and then we also have cameras on the International Space Station that are always taking photos of Earth as well. And we are fortunate to have a really good communication link to the ground, so we are able to downlink those photos almost all day um, down to the ground. And then, of course, people can send us photos as well. Hi, my name is Kara. Hi, my name is Kent. Our question is, what, what does the San Antonio River look like from space? Can you see it moving? Great question. Uh, one of my favorite things to look at up here has been rivers from space. Um, I have been able to see the San Antonio River, but we are a little too far away to actually see the water flowing. Um, but you can see rivers, um, the San Antonio River and others, um, all spread out across Earth. They look like veins, um, life, like lifelines of planet Earth. and. Um, I think the biggest thing that I think about when I see them um, from space, it's really clear um, all the people who need that water and who use that water from cities and towns to farmland, um, 
all the way to the ocean. And so it's just a reminder of how fragile and how special those ecosystems are and what a precious and limited resource water is. Hi, my name is Sebastian, and my question is, do you ever see satellites orbiting Earth from the space station? We do see satellites orbiting, and it's one of the coolest things to see out of the cupola windows. Uh, as satellites, just like seeing, being able to see space station from planet Earth, when we're at the right angle to the sun, uh, the sunlight can uh, illuminate the other satellites. So when we're looking outside cupola, sometimes it looks like we have uh, some other friends formation flying with us. They're just passing over the curvature of the Earth just as we are. Hi, my name is Aaliyah and my question is, what is the most exciting concept you've learned working at NASA? As astronauts, we get to learn all sorts of exciting things uh, at NASA in all different kinds of fields. It's one of my favorite parts of being an astronaut um, that we get to learn. Uh, you know, we're the mate, we're the technicians, we're the scientists on board space station. We're also the doctors and photographers and all sorts of different skills. So that's been really cool. One of my favorite technologies, though, that we get to learn about is the life support systems on space station. Um, we recycle our atmosphere up here, so all the air we breathe, and then we also recycle that the water the water we use. Um, everything is a limited resource on space station, much like it is also is on Earth. So those technologies that we use to uh, conserve our limited resources up here are really interesting to me. Hi, my name is Riley, and my question is, if you were to dump water in the space station, which way would it flow? Water in space is one of the coolest things ever, and playing with it is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, if you were to dump a water bottle in space, I have one right here, it doesn't really flow anywhere. Um, on Earth, the force of gravity is what causes water to flow, but up here, uh, with such low gravity, the surface tension on the water takes over, so you just get this blob of water floating around, kind of like this. Um, and it's pretty cool. Hi, my name is Ian, and my question is, you guys use safety tethers on spacewalks. How many do you use, and how strong are they? Mike, please. Oh. We use two different sa tethers on spacewalks. One of those is our safety tether. Um, that is a long steel cable that goes all the way back to the airlock, and that's kind of our backup uh, tether. And uh, the other tether that we use is our waist tether, and that's a tether, a shorter tether that we drop a couple feet long when we get to a work site, and that uh, keeps us in place at that work site. Hi, my name is Gabby, and my question is, what did you have to do to become an aerospace engineer? Hi, Gabby. To become an aerospace engineer, you have to study a lot of math and science, of course. Um, the fundamentals of math and science, uh, that's the fundamentals of aerospace engineering. And then very importantly, you have to be enthusiastic about aircraft and spacecraft. So uh, loving all aspects of flying and the engineering and the technology that goes into building those beautiful airplanes and spacecraft, uh, you have to be passionate about that. Hello, my name is Elon, and my question is, what kinds of animals live on the space station? We've had a variety of animals on space station, everything from uh, spiders and butterflies to flies and mice. 
Uh, I've gotten to work with mice up here. I haven't seen any of the other animals, although I think it would be interesting. And interestingly, some of those animals were actually sent up by students like yourself. Hello, my name is Victoria, and my question is, is there downtime to watch TV on the International Space Station? If so, what is the connection mechanism? Are they current shows or delayed slash reruns? Well, we don't have a ton of downtime up here because we are pretty busy every day, um, but we are able to watch TV shows, and we are able to get those um, either uploaded um, so we can watch the files on our computers um, even if we're offline or we can actually have them streamed in real time too like if there's a sports game or a show that you want to watch in real time uh, so it's actually pretty easy considering we're in space hi my name is Caitlin and my question is how big is an international space station The overall size of the International Space Station is about the size of a football field. Um, inside, the living space is about the size of a four-bedroom house, and there are seven people living on board. Hi, my name is Ren, and my question is, how do you breathe in the spacesuit? In our spacesuits, we have compressed tanks of oxygen, and so we are able to breathe that oxygen. And then we also have scrubbers in the spacesuit that remove carbon dioxide. So as we're breathing, we're actually also recycling that air um, in our own little tiny spaceship. Hi, my name is Will, and my question is, when astronauts return to Earth, do they get tired more easily doing everyday things than before they went to the station? Astronauts do get tired doing every, everyday things uh, more so after they return from space, but that feeling eventually fades. Um, in the first couple weeks, though, you are basically relearning how to live in gravity. Um, I haven't gotten to experience it myself, but I will get to here shortly in a couple weeks, and I'm really excited to just see how that feels um, because it's not very often that you have an opportunity like that. Uh, but one of my friends said that when he first got back, someone handed him a carton of blueberries, so it's not very heavy, and he put it in his hands, and he just said, oh, this is so heavy. So even something like blueberries can kind of make you feel you're just not used to it because, you know, up here everything just kind of floats around so uh, it's very easy to move things around and to move ourselves around and uh, once we get back to gravity we have to uh, s you know start contending with that hi i'm jaime aquino the proud superintendent of the san antonio independent school district or as i fondly refer to myself the teacher of teachers in our district we expect our children to reach for the star it is outreach programs like this one with the International Space Station that allow our students to imagine themselves among the stars. Thank you, NASA and the International Space Station crew for including our students at the Advanced Learning Academy in your daily activity as you continue to conduct your research that will impact all of humanity. Thanks to all the students for the excellent questions. I enjoyed answering them. And a big thanks to the San Antonio River Authority for sponsoring this event. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to all of the participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.